Hi. <laughs> Today I'm fulfilling a lifelong dream. Coolest place I've ever slept in. At the 747 Hostel Jumbo Stay. You, I got a feeling by the Black Eyed Peas because tonight is gonna be a good night. <laughs> There's something extra unique about today's stay though that makes it different to any other YouTube video from this hotel. So due to coronavirus, coronavirus, I may just be the only person staying here tonight. What's up, Nonstop Nation? How are you guys doing? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm doing pretty good right now. Right now, you guys are all sitting on something. Um, let me show you. Holy shit, it started rotating. Whoa, what a cool transition this would be if I was good at editing. Here is where you guys were sitting right now. On a wheel of a Boeing 747-200. There comes a day in every ad geek's life when he just needs to sleep in a cockpit. So I was out for a stroll this afternoon in Stockholm, just wandering around and I thought to myself, it's been a long time since I flew on a plane. I, I haven't taken a long haul overnight flight, a long haul flight at all for that matter, in more than a hundred days. It's time to change that. I wanna sleep on a plane tonight, but not just anywhere on a plane. So there's something that makes today's stay extra special, which is also the reason I'm not wearing a mask. I am the only person staying here tonight. Not only that, but I am the only person here. All the staff is at home due to COVID-19. You do auto check-in, they leave the keys for you. So when I got here, this 747 is all mine, which I think will make this an even more unique experience. Now, I'm gonna be here alone for a few hours until my friends come up from Gothenburg to join me. I have Oscar, who will be joining me upstairs in the cockpit, and three other friends who I'm going on vacation on, oh, vacation on, damn, who I'm going on vacation with right after this. So the five of us will be occupying this 450 seat jet. And where am I lying right now? So yeah, an entire 747 to five people sounds like pretty good social distancing to me. All right, so without further ado, let's do some exploring, shall we? So I'm standing at the fence right now to the hotel, and if this was a busy day, what's so insane is that right behind me, you might see there's some SAS A330s parked right there because of coronavirus. This right here is actually an active taxiway, so, I'd have aircraft taxiing right behind me. Like, literally right behind me. It's just so strange to be at a hotel and think that this building, where I'm sleeping tonight, has been all over the world. <laughs> so I've seen a lot of vloggers stay here, but I've never actually heard the history of the place. When I was thinking about it on the train here, I was like, wait, how the hell is this cheaper than just building a building here? Airplanes, even old ones, cost millions of dollars, not to mention that they have to drag it here from the airport, renovate it completely inside to comply with Swedish building regulations, including accessibility and all types of things. It's just the hassle seems insane. And then just thinking about how tough the spaces are to modify. As you'll see soon, the bathroom in the cockpit is like, almost like a completely normal bathroom. And I was just thinking, how does all the tubing work? How did they get the toilet up here? It's just mind-blowing. Because after all, this is a real plane. The plane actually started flying 45 years ago in 1976, when it was delivered as the 283rd 747 ever to Singapore Airlines. It flew there for a while before it was eventually sold to Pan Am. Pan Am 747s were among the most iconic planes in the sky, so it's crazy to know that this plane right next to me is one of the remnants of that iconic airline. After Pan Am went bankrupt, the aircraft flew for a bunch of airlines I've never even heard of. I'm gonna put a list of them here. But what's so mind-blowing to me about this is that there were so many airlines that flew 747s that just disappeared into history that av geeks from my generation don't know about, and they flew 747s. An airline that flies a 747 or an A3 or a huge plane like that today is so significant. It's one of the big players. You're not gonna see a tiny 
unheard of airline flying it, and most airlines that go bankrupt nowadays aren't flying these types of planes either. At the end of her career, this beauty flew for Cathay Pacific and Garuda Indonesia before coming to Sweden to fly for Transjet, a Swedish charter airline that went bankrupt in 2002, leaving this girl homeless and alone. It wasn't until four years later, in 2006, when the owner heard there was an abandoned 747 just sitting around at Orlando Airport. So you can walk around the aircraft pretty much however you want. There's a couple rooms here, the wheel rooms, where they would house the wheels after takeoff, of course. Underneath, there's one on each side. Then, I think the cheapest room category is these rooms right here that are actually in the shells of the old engines. So it took the owner quite a while to get approval, but in December 2007, he was granted permission to build this. So they towed the aircraft from the airport up onto a construction parking lot where they started building. First of all, by ripping out the entire old interior, sanitizing everything, and repainting the insides and outsides. So once the rooms and everything were installed, the last thing was to tow the plane to its current position, make sure it couldn't roll anywhere by settling the main landing gear into the ground, and they installed these stairs and an elevator to make it accessible from ground level. How cool is this? So that's a bit of the history of this aircraft. Now before we go inside, I just wanted to remind you guys that my Pride merch is available and of course my normal merch as well. If you go to nonstopdan.com slash merch, you can check it all out and you're supporting me and a great cause as well if you buy my departure board stickers and departure board designs. More details on that on the actual website. I also want to give a reminder to my Swedish viewers that until July 15th, you can get 25% higher sign-up bonus on all Swedish American Express cards. This only happens a couple of times a year, so it's such a unique opportunity. You can get up to 22,500 points just like that for signing up to a card. I'm going to put all the information below. I don't know if you guys know where I'm walking right now, but this is my first time ever walking on this part of a plane, and it feels so crazy and so cool. Given that my inner av geek has been completely suppressed for the past three months, this is just the best Monday in history. <laughs> Seriously, this right here is a view that us av geeks never, ever, ever get. It's so unique to see the plane from the wing and it just gives you a sense of how huge this thing is, it's not a one, it's not a surprise that you can turn it into a hotel. And my friends were asking me, Dan, are we gonna be like sleeping on seats tonight? How does this work? And I told them, just you wait till you see the rooms. I mean, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys though, if I was staying here all alone, without any staff, without any other guests, without my friends and Oscar coming in a few hours, I feel like it might be a little bit creepy. And my friends and I just watched Hereditary last night. If you've seen that movie, you'll know. It's not really a movie that makes you wanna stay all alone in a huge, abandoned hotel type of, type of thing. But yeah, it's a pretty unique experience. <laughs> So they actually gave me a secret code to enter to unlock the hotel. Which lets me in, but no one else, hopefully. <laughs> and then, oh, it smells like sausage in here. 747-200. So here's the cafe. In the nose of the aircraft, it's actually closed right now. But you can see here, they have a bunch of drinks. This is kind of epic. Can you imagine if it looked like this on a plane? Here they have a little kitchen. Oh, there's all these photos. This is pretty cool. 26 year career, Pan Am, Pan Am, Air Club, Tower Air. So here is where you would normally check in, where there would normally be someone working, I guess. And here is the hallway. Okay, I'm just gonna be honest. Being here all alone, hearing creaks and stuff, it's not not 
creepy. <laughs> So let's try to find their rooms. What's so insane to me walking here is that this really feels like a big normal hotel. The ceiling is high. Honestly, it's quite wide as well. But this is a plane. This is where you have people crammed in right here in this huge spacious place. And it has all these signs that just indicate that it's a normal building. So over here are a few more lavatories and windows out. Then we have this. Is this the back door of the plane? Wow. Look at this. Emergency exit only. We see the taxiway and the runway over there. Let's check it out. Okay, wow. So here is what it looks like. I mean, this is pretty crazy. If this is a thing where we have a picture of the plane in every room, that would be epic. The craziest thing is, look, I could stand on this top bed and not even reach the ceiling. We still have an overhead locker. Let's see if it can be opened. Whoa! Let's see if we can find the other room. Eight is here. And oh, wow. So here we have a Pan Am configuration showing us exactly what it looked like when it flew for Pan Am. But I think the craziest part about this room is that it has an Ab Geek's dream wing view. It also has a fat boy pillow. So you come from the entrance here and then you take this little spiral staircase and you reach the top floor where you are greeted by the conference room. It feels a little Soviet Union style. So up here you can also open the door. This private balcony above the, well, in line with the cockpit pretty much on the upper deck where the door would be. Here's the stairs and now let's enter our room with the most epic room number 747. It's an Ab Geek dream to sleep on a plane in any type of bed, whether it's in business or first, but sleeping in the cockpit is something that pretty much no one can do on an active commercial aircraft. So being able to do that here is just, this is the best night in a long, long time. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Staying here has really been something I've been meaning to do for a very long time. And for some reason, it just hasn't happened. I haven't had a reason to overnight in Stockholm yet. But now because of coronavirus and the limited selection of flights, I had to take a flight leaving at 6 a.m. tomorrow, which was the perfect time to sleep over here. And I can honestly say the experience was even more epic, actually much more epic than I was anticipating. This is not an ad or anything. This is just my completely objective Av Geek experience. And thank you so much for tuning in. I'll have a new video very soon for my first flight after my almost 100 day hiatus. It's a crazy, crazy feeling. Bringing back all this aviation into my life has honestly meant so, so much. Random thought for those of you who watched until the end. Isn't it weird when you sleep somewhere that you know other people you know have stayed? Like, it's weird to think that in the cockpit suite, so many influencers have stayed before me. I'm gonna be sleeping in the same bed tonight, showering in the exact same shower as so many people I watch. And for you guys, if you ever stay in the cockpit after this, you know that, wow, nonstop Dan stayed here. And you probably won't give a shit, but you might think that which is kind of cool. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching, all of you as always. And until I see you all next time, stay safe and fly safe.